work with a company called Digital Bond, and I've been doing this for about 20 years, focused on ICS security. So we fought for a long time to get attention of executive management, the board and such, and they, they really didn't care about this issue, but now we're at a point where they're beginning to care about it, and it's really incumbent on the people in this industry to decide what they want to do and proactively get management's buy-in for that. There's a lot of new products out there that are saying, hey, we'll solve all your problems if you buy it. What I was suggesting people to do is look at where they want to be in five years, develop a strategy for that, and then sell that to the management, as opposed to just saying, we're going to spend all this money on this product that's available today and get stuck with something that isn't going to meet their needs. And my concern is sometimes people are going to management and saying, we buy this, this is a solution. They're not going to be able to go back to management in two years and say, oh, by the way, what I told you two years ago was wrong. You know, they'll have lost this window when management cares. So this is really the time to be strategic and figure out where you want to go. You want to say, this is how we're going to start. This is our beginning, and here's where we want to get to. And, and, and lay out that roadmap to them and get funding for that maybe five-year project. Industrial systems are insecure by design, which really means that you don't need a vulnerability to do what you want. You, you can read the manual and say, how do, I get the, how do I get the system to turn something off or on, send the command and it happens. So we're in this situation where if the bad guy gets in, he can do what he wants. So that's a real challenge which is why some of these detection solutions are so important. You know if you can't stop it, at least if you can detect that they're in there, you can then react. So, so that's, that's one of the big issues. People think these control systems are special little flowers, but they're running computers and programs and networks and things like that, and, and they have to come to grips with all the same things that you have to do to support any sort of information system. Those are probably the two big ones that we see. Every country is different. So from a U.S. perspective, uh, it's, it's been disappointing. Uh, they, in the U.S., they don't have so much of a controlling aspect as maybe like a Singapore or some other countries that can be more, more uh, they can say, you must do this. Uh, where we wish we would get more support for the government is actually uh, being more vocal, actually saying, you should be doing this, even if they can't enforce it you know, pushing actually, they have the biggest megaphone. Everyone would listen to them, but they're very cautious. So in the U.S. that would be our biggest help, but it's really a tough problem. It's not something that is going to have a global government solution. Every country is going to be very different. So if you were to look at a country like Singapore, you know, they have a lot of government control. They have a small critical infrastructure, you know, a small number of vendors, and they, and not vendors, but like small number of power utilities, water utilities. You can do that. You get to a place like the United States where you have all these privately owned companies that communicate with each other. It becomes very difficult and you don't have the regulatory structure that can say you must do this. One of the hard things when you start to get more regulation is it tends to be very inefficient. Like we have power regulations in the United States for power plants that have required a tremendous amount of paperwork to prove compliance. So you're spending a lot of money on things that actually aren't helping. So it's a very difficult problem. If I was, sometimes I say, if I was able to make the rules for the government, like everyone would listen to whatever I'd say, I'd have a hard time figuring out what would be effective. I'm not sure there's a good answer. Obviously Stuxnet kicked things off and then the Ukraine uh, attack on their distribution system that took out the power. I know that had an impact. We saw electric utilities, they used to have incident response exercises that were essentially they would say, can we rebuild a computer? After Ukraine, they started coming up with much more elaborate exercises. They would say, what if we lost our whole control center? What would we do? So Ukraine had a big impact and then Triton, Triton had an impact too because people now said, wait a minute, someone's actually trying to blow something up? That's, that got people's attention.